What's up guys, Mason the Brock Anderson here. So, I thought about several different ways I could open up this review. Something clever, you know, a rendition of Another One Bites the Dust, but instead it's another two points are dropped, or another set of points are dropped, I guess, because we also occasionally will drop three points. Um, I also thought about setting up like a, a chart to show like the, the cycle of how we cycle through managers and the stages of how they come in. They start to do well, but then slowly fade into doing the same thing over and over again with no results, no results, until eventually they get sacked and we start the cycle over again. Thought about doing that too, but you know what? I'm just tired. I'm just too tired to do any of that stuff. Like, if if they don't care enough to really like go out there and put forth effort to beat Brighton, why should I care enough to put forth effort to even make any sort of fun jokes at the beginning of a video? I mean, I already don't put a whole lot of effort into these videos anyway, but I feel like putting even less effort in. I feel like not really doing anything outside of just, let me just talk about why this was such a stupid, boring game. <laughs> so the stupid part comes again from Tutrell. Um, yeah, the lineup. So on the base of it looks like a his typical 5-2-3 in a way. Um, until you actually see the lineup and you realize he's gone for a 4-2-3-1 out of nowhere. And boy, did that not work. <laughs> uh, yeah, having Alonzo as a left back is never a good thing. And sure enough, he got eaten up a lot today by Lamptey. God, I just, I miss having Lamptey at the club now. Just watching him perform, all I can think is, yeah, James is probably slightly better than he is. But he works so much harder than James does on the most for the most part. And now that we don't have James... I'm just looking at him thinking, that could be our player. He could be us. Except we decided, no, 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 we don't want to keep him around. We don't want to try to integrate him in the first team. We're just going to say, no, you're not really that important, so sure, we'll let you go. And look at what's happening. He's tearing us apart whenever we play him. So yeah, back four with Silva and Rudiger, which doesn't make a whole lot of sense, because Silva, he's a good defender, and honestly, he played well tonight. But he's definitely not as effective in a back two as he is in a back three, like the center. Because he's able to just read the game and cut out a lot of chances. In a back two, he's not as effective because he's not really as involved. He's doing a lot more defending high up the field, which means if they get him behind, he's not going to have the pace to get back. When he's in a back three, typically he doesn't have to worry about having pace to get back because he can read the game well enough to put himself in a position to make sure that doesn't have to happen. It's a lot more difficult to do that in a back two, though, because you don't really have as, as much help in front of you. Um, and you're not able to organize as well either from, you know, part of a, a two. So, don't understand that decision. Lonzo doesn't make any sense. Conte and Jorginho, that's whatever. But then you go up front and you've got three in behind Lukaku with hudson Adoy, Mount, Ziyech. And, yeah, let's just talk about why Ziyech. I know he scored the goal, but, I mean... Let's be fair, it was really Sanchez's mistake that led to the goal. Now granted, he's one of the only people that are willing to take that chance and actually hit the target tonight. Um, which, I mean, he only hit the target like twice out of all the chances he had. So he's still wasting tons and tons of chances. But still, after the Man City game, there's no reason to play Ziyech again. <laughs> there was no reason to see him, or Lukaku for that matter, but there's no reason to see... Ziyech again after that game and yet here he is again and yes he scored he didn't help us any outside of that though second half he stepped it up a little bit created a few chances still wasted several he's hurting us more than he's helping us and with Mount as the center attacking mid that's not actually a bad place for him to be however it's hard for us to get him the ball whenever it doesn't really feel like there's any connectivity between our two midfielders and our three in front of them. I, I don't know how to explain it. I, I don't know if it was just the players not working well together, but there was something about the way Tuchel had us set up that felt like there was no structure to it. So it felt like whenever we were trying to break forward, nobody's really in the position to help. They're just sort of where they are, and sometimes they'll occasionally make a run into space, but by the time they get there, it's too late because they weren't in the right position to begin with. So... I don't really know exactly why this didn't work. Because seeing hudson Adoy and Mount in behind a striker, I'm not even going to say Ziyech because, again, 
no reason to see him. But seeing those two in behind a striker should work. But it didn't. I also do think putting Hudson Odoi on the left side, again, limits him. And it makes it to where he can't really help us or affect the game at all. And sure enough, he didn't. So, yeah, just a lot of weird decisions tonight, especially to set up against a Brighton side that, yeah, they've been doing okay recently, but they're still not that good. Like, there's no reason to change our tactics against them. Could have changed the tactics against Man City because that's a team you should want to change your tactics against because they're one of the best teams in the country. So I don't understand why we pretty much went with the same <laughs> against Man City and then we changed it up against Brighton. I don't really get that decision from Tuchel. But again, part of it is he's an idiot. So that that probably explains a lot of why he made these decisions because he he thought to himself, this makes sense. And in Tuchel's brain, it probably did make sense. But to the rest of us, and pretty much, I mean, just everybody in the world, if you look at it, you're like, wait, that doesn't make sense. And this is why we're ending up with one point today instead of all three. So, um, as far as the individuals, this is where it gets really hard to talk about because, again, how much of it is Tuchel's tactics and the way he set us up and his management style and how much of it is the players not giving their all. Um, so it's hard to differentiate what's the player's fault and what's Tuchel's fault, but I'll do my best. Uh, Keppa, I mean, not really much he can do. It's it's a free header, and there's no reason why there should be a free header at the top of the six. And yeah, it was at him, but it came in with so much pace, and it wasn't like if it was at his body and somehow he missed it and like dove out of the way, that'd be one thing. But it's like right here, and it's hard. You know, you're you're here down low because you're waiting for him to you know, not it to the ground, and he goes up higher, and it's kind of difficult to get your hands up there quickly. So I'm not going to blame him for the goal. And aside from that, he did okay today. Um, there was one in particular where deflection came off Jorginho, and he had to readjust himself and get over to touch it just wide. So um, overall, I thought he did fine, and he's really stepped up in Mindy's absence and showed that he can be a solid keeper. So that's been good to see. Um <sighs> Espelicueta on the right side struggled a little bit at fullback, um, and it just a lot of it has to do with, I think, fitness, because he's been playing a lot of games, and he's at that age now where it's more difficult to play that many games, especially when you're having to play a wingback or a fullback position, because you're up and down a lot. In spite of that, though, he still did it. He's still somebody that gives his all for the cause, even if he's not the fastest, even if he's not the quickest, he's still trying to help. Defensively, he's always back in the right position. Even if the player gets in behind him for a second, he does well to make his run to the point where they can't get into the goal. They can't make their run inside of him. He always does such a great job of curling his run to make sure I'm keeping you outside and I'm going to force you outside because he's one of the best defenders in the world at that. Just something about his ability to read a situation and make sure he does not lose a one-on-one. -on -one. He does it so well. On the other other side of it, his crosses are still obviously not that great. His ability in the final third isn't the best, but he's there. He's providing an option. He's showing up out wide and giving us something to play to so it can open up the space a little bit more. And any chances that we created in the second half, most of the time came from him because he's out there and he's drawing a player to him and it's opening up space for either Werner or Ziyech or whoever was over there at the time to try to make something happen. So... Yeah, I mean, ability-wise, he may not be fantastic, but his work rate is something I wish we could instill to everyone in the team. Because if we could do that, I don't think there's any team that could challenge us. The problem is we got some talented players that don't want to give their all, and that's why we can't win games. Um, Silva, I already talked about you know being kind of at, sort of out of position because I think he's better in the center of a back three. Um, even so, still did very well, making good challenges, reading plays well, and putting himself in a good position to make defensive blocks and interceptions. So I thought overall he did fine, but again, I do think part of the reason why it was easier for them to play through us tonight is because Silva wasn't back there directing traffic. He was more having to focus on actually going out to defend. Um, so something that hurt us, and again, I think that's Tuchel's fault, not Silva's. Uh, and then Rudiger, again, showed his stupid side tonight um, got himself booked for descent and just a lot of times felt like he wasn't really connected with Silva in the defense and I think that was kind of another problem we had throughout the night why it was so easy for them to play down it was like 
we didn't really set ourselves up well for them to counter on us. We were kind of disorganized. People weren't really connected, and so it was easy to play down the field. And then it's like once we got into the box, then all of a sudden we did well at kind of crowding them out and finding the numbers to get the block in. So they didn't really create many chances in the box, but they definitely had a lot of dangerous-looking plays where they sh- should have or could have created some chances. Um, so it was like the defending in the box was fine, but the defending outside of it and coming down the field was not great. Um, and Rudiger, again, just the disconnectivity from Silva really contributed to a lot of that, I feel. Um, and then on top of that, I don't know, I just feel like he's been a little bit slower recently. Like, he's not really been... I feel like he's been kind of beat for pace a couple times, and he's not typically one of those defenders, so I don't know what's going on with him there. But Alonso on the left side again, just he's not a left back and got beat again tonight because of that. So, again, we just we need to find a solution. I know we brought Kennedy back. I don't think he's a solution. I think he's – I don't even know if he's a fix, honestly. Like, he he's shown some quality from time to time, but I just don't think he's – a good enough player to be at the Premier League level. So on the ball, he does okay every now and then. But we need a a left wing back who's going to come in, who's going to do both sides of the ball well, and I don't think Kennedy is that option. But Alonso is also, I mean, he's not a left back, obviously, but I also think he just, he doesn't have the legs for it anymore. You know, even even on the attack nowadays, he's not really finishing for us. He's not putting in great crosses. God, the the corner that he put in in the last minute of the game... (laughs) Whew, <laughs> that if I were the coach, I would have run down there and socked him in the jaw. Because, like, how could you waste that chance? You got a corner in the last minute of the game. You put it in there with whip and with danger, and he just drives the ball low to the first defender. Didn't even give anybody a chance to get on it. I just, God. But that's the problem, though, is that he's not been effective on the ball either recently. So he's already not a good defender. We know that. But he's not doing anything in the attack, so... What does he bring to the team, aside from giveaways and bad defending? Nothing. <laughs> so, yeah, we, we need to find not just a, a solution for now, we need to find a backup solution in general, because if we don't have Chilwell, all we have right now is Alonzo, and he's not good enough. And I know, pretty sure Kennedy's not good enough. So we got to find something, either a permanent solution there that can be a, a challenger to Chilwell, or somebody that will just come in for the time being, you know, whether we got to go get somebody back from loan, I don't know. But it's just, it's not looking good on that left side right now. That's been a lot of where we struggled recently. In the middle, Conte, I don't know what's going on with him, but this is the second game in a row where he's looked a lot slower than he normally does. Like, he's normally somebody, even when he's not at full fitness, when he's 75%, he still looks like he's on pace. You know, he's still making good challenges. There are just moments where you feel like he's not quite involved as he normally is. Because most of the time, Conte is just all over the place, constantly making challenges, constantly involved. Past couple games, it's not just been that he's kind of faded out from time to time. He's also looked a bit slower. Like, there are players that are beating him to the ball constantly, and he's diving in and not winning the ball. Um, So I don't know what's going on with him, but... It really feels like he's struggling at the moment and kind of hurting us. And that's not typical Conte. So I don't know if it's an injury. I don't know if it's a mental thing. But whatever it is, he's we, we need Conte back because we're losing in the midfield a lot right now. So until we get old Conte back, we're going to be struggling in the midfield. And teams are just going to constantly be overrunning us. Um, and then Jorginho, it was just, I mean, Jorginho... <laughs> A little slower than he needs to be. Um, his passing is okay at times, but then at times it's just giveaways. So, I don't know. I, again, I, I still don't see what people see in Jorginho. He just, he's a decent distributor, but I think there are far better distributors than he is. Um, and I just don't think defensively... There was one point where Lamptey did well to win the ball, and then he manages to poke it by Mount, and Jorginho's there. And all Jorginho has to do is read that situation because he pokes it a little too far, and he's just got to get himself in the way. And said, what does he do? He lunges in, and Lamptey takes it past him. And their commentators, oh, Lamptey, what a great skill. And I'm like, he didn't do anything. He just poked it and ran because Jorginho's too slow to even beat him to the ball when he's closer. Like, that's all it was. So, but I mean, that's what you're going to risk whenever you have Jorginho in, is that inability to keep up with pace in the midfield. So, uh, and that's what we got a lot of. <laughs> Ziyech, like I already said, I mean, after the Man City game, I didn't want to see him again. First half, 
just more of the same from the City game. Just constantly giving the ball away. First touch is terrible. His passing is awful. Then all of a sudden the goal happens and got a little bit better after that. And again, the goal, I'm glad he at least got it on target because Alonzo and hudson Adoy and Lukaku and... I mean, none of them were were putting it on target. Jorginho as, as well. So the fact that he got a shot on target from outside the box is already better than most of the players, but that, I mean, that's it's like saying, oh, well, I mean, we're better than Arsenal. It's like, well, yeah, well, congratulations. You're, you're better than the worst team in London, basically. Um, yeah, but it's, I really should have made fun of Man U. They're the ones that are doing awful right now. But, I mean, it's that in itself is nothing to be proud of, and then the keeper error leads to the goal, so it's like, okay, well, good, we got lucky. Um, after that, like I said, it got a bit better from him. You know, the passes were coming a, a bit more accurate. Still a few giveaways, though. Still s- several moments where it feels like we have a chance and either a bad touch or a little bit too slow on the ball and the chance is gone. So, I don't know, he just... I, he's not the same player that we thought he was. He's He's not the player that came in under Lampard flying high, looking to try to create things, looking to take these chances. He's not that same player. I don't know what happened. I don't know if it's the injuries, but right now the ZX that I'm seeing is one that I don't want to see. (laughs) It's a player that I don't want to have in my team because he's not really helping the team as a whole. You know, the giveaways are just constantly putting us under pressure. The constant bad touches are leading to missed opportunities because we have a chance to counter and then his bad touch means that the defense has a chance to to get back now and essentially cover all the passes and all the passing lanes so now we just have nothing going for us so way too much of that from him and it's just it's been the past few games that i've seen him so it's not like it's getting better it's like no this is, was not good performance not good performance and a not good performance and we're still here so nothing's getting better so it's kind of that situation like who was it I'm trying to remember, I think it was Murata under Sari, possibly. can't remember if that's right or not. But I'm pretty sure it was Murata that just, people kept saying, no, you just got to keep playing him, keep giving him time. And the more I saw him, the more I'm like, okay, you're giving him time. You're giving him a chance to play out of this bad form, but he's not doing that. He's just getting worse. And every time he plays worse, his morale drops more and he continues to play worse. So... It's like, at some point, you just got to say, okay, enough's enough. We've given you a chance. You're not performing well. You're not getting better. Here's the bench. And I feel like ZX kind of in the same boat right now, where his performances have not been getting better. They've been kind of getting worse. And this was not necessarily as bad as Man City, but it's still not good. So, it's, it's just this weird spot that he's in right now, where I feel like he's not playing at his best, and for some reason, he's not fixing the problems. He's not, you know, playing himself into better form. He's just kind of stuck in this rut of bad form after bad form. Another player who I feel like is there right now is Mason Mount. A player that I love to praise because I feel like he's a good player and he's somebody that didn't get a whole lot of recognition when when Lampard was in charge. Um, Because I think a lot of what he does kind of goes unnoticed because he does it so well and he, he helps the team as a whole, even if he himself isn't necessarily reaping the benefits of it however recently it feels like he's not helped the team either it feels like bad touches bad passes moments where normally he he does well to keep possession and turn out of pressure he's not been doing any of that recently and I don't know why but I'm, I'm watching him play and I'm thinking he doesn't look good and it's not very often I say that about a Mason Mount performance so yeah it's kind of getting to that point where I I don't know if it's a mental thing or an injury thing, same as Conte, but he's not at his level. He's not playing at the same standard that I'm used to seeing him play. So at some point, we got to look for another option. And I do think that Kai Havertz is a good option to put there instead of Mount. But of course, he'd rather play Havertz out of position as a false nine, but we'll get to that when we get to it. Um, And then hudson Adoy, you know, being on the left side again, it does restrict him. It keeps him from being able to do what he does well. So I'll grant him that. However, it also felt like he wasn't really moving for us as much as I I would like to see him do. You know, just so many moments where we're looking to break. He gets himself into space, gets the ball, and then he doesn't really go anywhere with it. He just kind of takes some slow touches, which allows Brighton's defense to get back. And then he takes a touch backwards, and now there are more players behind the ball. And then eventually 
more pressure comes and then he either loses it or he has to pass it backwards. And that's kind of what Hudson Odoi's game t tonight was. Honestly, I was surprised he wasn't the one to go off because, like I said, Ziek had kind of stepped it up in the second half and he was still just not really giving us much of anything. So, yeah, really bad performance from him. Just not necessarily a bunch of mistakes, but just nothing that helped us overall. You're just kind of a body out there tonight. And then as far as the subs that came on, um, all three of them happened at once, which they were far too late in the game to really affect anything anyway. But Kovacic on for Jorginho, which not necessarily a bad option because Kovacic does provide a bit more pace and energy in the midfield than Jorginho. Um, and he he did okay. You know, Again, his finishing is something that we needed from him tonight because there were some moments where it came to him top of the box and I'm thinking, shoot! And then I instantly thought, please don't shoot because... He can't finish. <laughs> he said several moments where he had an option to finish and he didn't. And sure enough, there was actually one that came to him later on where a perfect chance to hit it on the half volley and he's leaning back and it sails right over. So, yeah, I, I don't know. Whenever they show videos of training, they show them like burying them in the top corners and I'm just like, so clearly they know how to finish. They just don't do it in the games for whatever reason. <laughs> um, and then Havertz and Werner came in. With Havertz up front and Werner dropped deeper as a wing. Why? Because Tuchel hates us. <laughs> and he wants to see us suffer. So he's like, here, let's put a striker in wing position. And let's put an attacking mid as the striker. Because you know how many times we scored with Havertz as a false nine? That one game against Palace last year that we scored four in the first half because Palace didn't know how to defend? How many since have we scored since? Maybe one. I've tried it multiple times. But it's okay, guys. Th it'll work eventually. I'm sure it'll work eventually, even though Havertz's best game is when he's able to drop deep, receive it, and then make a pass. But I want to put him up front where he has to receive it under pressure, where he doesn't have time to turn and make a pass. So he'll give the ball away. He also is not as fast as Werner, so whenever we played him behind, he's not going to beat the defenders to it when Werner might. That'll work! And then Werner, I mean, he's dropped so deep... He's not really able to use his pace because the defenders can easily prepare for it because they see him coming from a mile away. Instead of, we play the ball in behind and he turns off of them and he goes, that's a lot harder to defend. But the way Tuchel has it set up, neither of them are playing in their comfortable position. And even then, most of the time Werner likes to come in off the left and kind of cut inside. So if you are going to do this where you, you're going to play Havertz in the middle and Werner out wide... Why not put Werner on the left side where he normally likes to cut in on his right and put Hudson Adoy on the right side where he normally likes to drive down and cross it with his right? That would make a lot of sense, which is why Tuchel didn't do it because, again, idiot. Um, so, yeah, I mean, both of them, it's not like either of them played poorly. I just really don't think that they affected the game as much as we would have one of them to. And I think a lot to do with the fact that Tuchel didn't put them in positions that really helped them. So, yeah. I don't know. Again, it is kind of a cycle where manager comes in, we have some instant success, we have that, that initial burst of energy of like, okay, new coach, new tactics, new everything. Let's do it. And then it just slowly kind of fades into same old tactics, same old ta tactics, same old tactics, same old tactics. And then it gets dull and boring. Players start to lose a bit of faith, which... Lukaku, I actually forgot to talk about him. Um, yeah, Lukaku, just back to what I didn't like earlier this season. I mean, this two games in a row now where it's the exact same thing. Essentially, he wants the ball on his plate, and he's not changing his run otherwise. That's that's how he plays. And that's If it were something where back then it were just those few games because he you know was in this mindset of like, God, we're not playing how I want to play, and he got frustrated... But now he's like, okay, fine. I'll, I'll change the way I play. I'll do it for the team. If you were doing that right now, I would not care about those past games. But the problem is, is that Lukaku is back. Because so many moments where Cross comes in, it's not right on his run. He's not changing his run. Who do you think I am? I'm Lukaku. I'm not going to change my run for anybody. You don't put that Cross right on my forehead, I'm not getting to it. Because you should have done better with your Cross. You didn't pass it right to my foot. Unlucky, I'm not getting to it because you should have been better with your passing. You know, at Inter, they put it right on my head every single time. They crossed it right to me every single time. I didn't have to change my runs for anybody at Inter. 
That I I I'm not saying that's where his mindset is, but I would not be surprised if that's where his mindset is right now because that's the way he's playing. He's playing a very much selfish and just the fact that he stayed on as long as he did. Again, I just I'm looking at Tuchel going Do you, do you not see any of this? Do you, do you not see the problem? Ziek, do you not see the problem that he had against City? Do you not see the problem we're having here? So again, I'm just, I'm tired. I already said it last game, but I, I struggle to get excited for any of these games anymore. Because, I mean, even if we win, I, I don't expect it to be a good performance. Because a lot of these players just come out and they don't put forth good performances. They're just sort of out there. And it feels like they're just there to collect a paycheck and that's it. <laughs> I don't know, it, it's really frustrating and disappointing. So... I don't know if it needs to be a change of manager. I, I doubt they're going to because, I mean, obviously, as far as results are concerned, why would you change the manager? And you're in third, you're in the final of the EFL Cup, you know, you're still in the FA Cup, made it through, although not finishing first in the group stage was really bad. But, I mean, you've got an easy draw for the, the first round. So you do kind of look at everything, and it is kind of like, okay, yeah, it is tough to say that Tuchel should go. But my thing is, the way things are headed right now, I could see us slowly dip out of that top four. That first round against Lille, I could see us lose that over the two legs. The The final of the EFL Cup, whether it's Arsenal or Liverpool, both of them are playing high energy right now, and we're not, so I could see us losing that one. And the FA Cup, I mean, obviously it's still early on in the FA Cup, so anything can happen from here. But just the way that we're going and the, the performances, the energy levels, the motivation, the the look, the attitudes that I'm seeing, none of them really get me excited for the future with Tuchel. Because I just feel like we've, we're kind of stuck now in this rut of just bad form and he can't get us out of it. And honestly, even since he first came in, he's not been able to change our finishing. Our finishing quality has been bad since Lampard was here. Honestly, since Sorry was here. <laughs> If you want to go back even further. So ever since Sari was here, when we had Murata, we've had a finishing issue. Then Lampard came in, and Abraham came in. It was new, it was fresh, young talent. And there was kind of an initial burst where it felt like, okay, we are able to finish. But then slowly, we weren't able to. And it became an issue where we have all these chances, we can't finish them. And then Tuchel came in, and we still weren't finishing well, but we were defending better, which was helping us win some games. And that was fine. But now we brought in a 90 million pound striker... And we're still not finishing. <laughs> we're still struggling to find the net, even if we're creating chances. And now, honestly, even the defending's not been that great. I mean, we've looked poor defensively in the past several run of games. So I just don't I don't see the excitement, the the energy, the genius of Tuchel anymore. I just see he's a very average coach who had some good ideas at first, but now can't figure out how to change it. He can't figure out how to solve problems. He's he's great at masterminding, like, I guess, I don't even know what to call it. But it felt like he came into a team that just needed some tweaks to get us better defensively, and he did that. But now we're struggling in other ways. We're struggling around the pitch. We're struggling missing some people. And it feels like those problems are ones that he's not able to solve. And now motivation is going out of the team. And we're just we're slowly slipping into obscurity. And West Ham and Arsenal, I'm sure, are going to look to take advantage of that. So whether we finish in the top four or not remains to be seen. But I will admit, I'm not looking forward to <laughs> the next few games because it's, it's going to be rough. But anyways, that's it for me. So let me know what you guys think down in the comment section below. What were your thoughts on this game? Let me know what you talk about and discuss all that good stuff. Leave a like and subscribe for future Chelsea reviews. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace out.